Welcome back to Red Next Dirty Hands. I'm Pete, and today we're back in the shop. We got a few projects on the go. That's a new one I just picked up there, 2017 Sidewinder. That's a 153-inch, you know, big old paddle track. That one there, I think we might end up turning into a drag sled, but uh, we're not working on that one today. Today, today I'm going to be spending some time on Yo Mama. <laughs> This is going to be part two of the Yo Mama build, you know, the 700 SRX triple two-stroke turbo build for uh, model, the, <laughs> the 2025 model everybody wanted. So uh, we'll get going on this. I did. I do got to get going on that one. You know, I want to get that built. You know, we can get that going for grass dragon this season too. You know what? It's got a big old paddle track on there. Maybe shave her down or swap it out. That one there, I got her, the tunnel's bent on it. It was an insurance job, so she's a bit tweaked and the rails are all busted and everything in there. So it's gonna be a bit of a build, but I got all the four stroke parts that were on your mama that I could put on that to go fast. So, oh, ideas, ideas, what can we do? You know, now that I'm dedicating this one to be a two stroke and we got the confidence, it's gonna work out. So she's gonna live the rest of her life as a triple two stroke turbo. Boost eater, you know, skidoo killer, right? <laughs> so I could put all the performance parts on. What are we going to call that one? Hmm. Think of a name. Let me know. We're going to go to probably have it set up for drag racing, grass and snow drag. So, uh, but yeah, leave a comment or whatever, some names, some ideas for a uh, name for a drag sled. Can't wait to hear these ones. <laughs> oh, every sled's got to have a name. We got your mama, you know, <laughs> shockers parked away over there. So uh, we need something good for that one. But anywho, last video of this one here, you saw that I've got the 700 triple mounted in there. It's locked in, it's solid. I got the turbo kind of mocked up. I got the throttle bodies figured out, I believe. I'll show you what I did with that. But now we got to, uh, we got to focus on the exhaust. We got to get, we got to connect from the cylinders to the turb ski with an expansion pipe. We're not gonna be running the triple, you know, we're gonna be put running one big pipe on this one uh, just to save some face and hopefully ease the build of this, you know, hopefully we can get this done. You know, I, I'd like to have her maybe fired up in a month or so, you know, so we can use it in the summertime season too. So fingers crossed, we'll see. Let's give you a little refresher of what's going on here. So yeah, the motor is completely installed, locked in. All the motor mounts are made. She's rock solid. There's no rubber uh, isolators or anything like that. This thing is as stiff as stiff can be. And I made this alignment tool, took a stock secondary and an old primary, keyed it on there, just like so. That helped me lock this thing into where it needs to be. Tipped it so I got the throttle bodies because we are fuel injecting this. So I had to make these throttle bodies up for this. So we needed the angle to clear the stock motor mount, the jack shaft. Put the fuel tank in so we know what room we're working with here. Got it tipped down so the exhaust is coming down into the front belly there. I got the stock turbo. Basically just lifted it up from its original position in there. It still clears the hood panel. It's going to be close. We're going to have to put a, a turbo blanket on there. But yeah, I got it mocked up sitting here on the same, the original turbo pedestal. I just lifted it up, you know, but it is mounted on there solid. I've got my original straight pipe from JP Sidewinder on there. That's three inch straight pipe. So oh, this thing's going to sound pretty gnarly, but uh, whether it sounds good or not, I don't know. Might, <laughs> might not really be good. Who knows? But uh, we're going to give it a go that way, no matter what. And like I said, fuel ejecting it. So I made up these. Oh, try the bodies. Get it. I'll show you what's going on here. We can use the tailgate of the old raw dog there to uh, <laughs> act as our workbench. All right, so these throttle bodies were not the easiest thing to uh, come up with, but uh, I figured, you know what, this is a one-off build, so there, it's not like I can walk into a performance store and say, hey, I need a set of throttle bodies for my uh, SRX 700 triple to put in my Sidewinder. So I had to make these. These were stock throttle bodies off of a uh, Viper, I think a 2014 or something like that. JP bought it a few years ago. Now, the problem is, is because obviously the spacing 
is way bigger from the two stroke to the four stroke. These things, like these two throttle bodies here originally were actually together. I cut these apart and had to space them out. This one is already separate, it's on its own. So the throttle shaft that goes through these two, I had to cut it as well. And then I made this aluminum spacer. I kind of just drilled and put some set screws in there so I can fine tune the placement of the throttle plates. And then once I was happy with that, I drilled right through, put some cotter pins to lock it. I've put these bushings, machine, machine these bushings to space them all apart. So it's all locked together. So hopefully, you know, I can keep these as a unit together and bolt them into the engine that way. Um, I took these ends. These are all factory ends off of a 700 triple uh, carburetor set. So I just cut the ends off machine the ends of the throttle bodies and these so they were a nice tight slip fit and then i just got to transition port them out smooth them all out on the inside there but i got all the throttle plates in there uh obviously you can tell the difference the spacing's quite a bit normally this groove here would go in between the uh springs and set up here to work this throttle plate so i welded this bracket in to extend it over so now i've got my throttle working all three at the same time nice one other than that you know that gives me so i got my tps sensor on there i can use these stock rubbers to couple my intake that i have to build onto that and then this is a fuel rail and some injectors off of an apex so basically i just had to take these uh saddles or ba baskets whatever you want to call them for the injectors this one i was able to leave in the same spot and then i moved cut these this one off this one off move them to where I need to be. So then I'll just weld up these holes, weld up all these buckets, took this uh, piece off of, I think this was off a Sidewinder or a Viper fuel rail. I machined it down. So it's sealed with an O ring. That'll be my return line to my fuel pressure regulator. This will be my main inlet line. So everything works that way. This thing all clips in. And then all I got to do is just move this tab over just a tiny little bit. So to line up with the original, there's a threaded hole there and then same with this one I just got to weld one on that way I can bolt the uh, fuel rail down so it holds clamps it down so I won't have any fuel leaks or anything like that and then when I go to make my aluminum intake I'll couple these guys all together and then I'll have it so it bolts straight down to the engine so this cannot blow off with the boost <laughs> we're over here in JP's machining corner <laughs> <laughs> without these tools there's no way i'd be able to do any of this so thanks jp but uh, you know i have fun trying to make things out of nothing you know stuff that i got laying around so i got a, some aluminum tubing so i've been playing around the size of this tube i think it's two inch tubing or whatever fits perfectly inside these guys here so all i've been doing i don't know if you can see that i just take the tube i cut a groove in there which coincides these guys have a little lip inside there. So once you machine that in there, tickety boo, that's nice and tight. And then I'll just take all these little, these little guys out and then I'll turn them down a little bit in the lathe too, just so I can squeeze those clamps a little tighter. Then that way that'll be nice locked in, won't blow out. So my thinking is if I can get three of these things made, you know, cut them half the width. I want them low tolerance, tight, close, prof low profile there. Get them all in there. This one isn't uh, cut yet, but you get the idea. And then I can take this. This is fairly heavy duty. This is the stuff I used to fix Redford's uh, aluminum snowmobile trailer. Check out the video on that. I ended up using this as the frame rail for it, but this is fairly thick aluminum. So what I can do, I could set this guy up. I could hole saw and space these guys out in here like that. Then I can, I can cut and taper this, angle it off any way I want, put the inlet tube on it anywhere. This will be my intake. That way it's nice and thick. I know it's not going to flex out or anything like that. It's a little bit overkill, but hey, it's better to overbuild than underbuild. That's what I say. So that's going to be the plan for the intake. But I don't really want to do that yet until I figure out that exhaust. So, I mean, to say that the exhaust on this thing is going to be difficult is a huge understatement. It is going to test my patience like a toddler. But I've already gotten a bit of a head start and I've already fabbed up a bit of a W pipe there. I just use the original uh, SRX uh, pipes coming off the cylinder there. Uh, that way, I just took uh, off my buddy 
Jeff Bezos there got some 90 degree elbows and then uh, was able to fashion up, you know, make that W pipe out of this. So when she's all said and done, just welded that two inch B band thing on there. So when I start making the pipe to coil around in there, I can weld this end on the end of the pipe, put her on there, that'll clamp on there. The stock sidewinder on the turbo there has the exact same kind of setup. It's not quite a two inch. I don't think it might be a little bit bigger. I can't remember. That's about the same. This is the two inch is actually a little bit bigger than what's on the side. So the sidewinder must be metric. I don't know. Anywho, that's my plan. Weld that on there. And then we got a nice, well, what I think is a nice smooth transition from each cylinder all blending into one. You can kind of see, well, a little hard to see. Let me grab a light. Okay, so we got a nice smooth transition for the three into one. So should be fairly free flowing. And I mean, if I don't say so myself, that's kind of good looking, eh? <laughs> that's a pretty nice header pipe, I'd say. Or nice one. So the plan is now that I got the W pipe built up for that with the two inch V band on there, I'll bolt it back onto the motor, get that situated. So I've got my A to B points. I know I got to go from here over to there. So I just got to figure out how to make a pipe get up in here, up around there, back around here. Billy over the Easter uh, weekend there did drop off. That was a D&D &D pipe off of his, I think, Arctic Cat 800. So we end up using that because that is a D&D &D pipe. But you know what that means? Well, we're going to be giving your mama the big one. I don't know if that big pipe's going to fit in your mama, but uh, we'll see if I can make it fit. Definitely not going to fit with it like that. So uh, we're going to peel that off of there. Let's, uh, let's bolt that W pipe back in there and see what we got to do. Had to, uh, I already had the pipe on there mocked up. I got to undo the two power valves to get it in and out of there, but it is serviceable. It is replaceable. So, so far, fingers crossed, this build is working. So everything is kind of serviceable. You know, it's not impossible to get at. It's still not going to be the easiest thing to work on. Like the old SRX, you know, lift the hood and everything's right there. But, you know, it's going to be cool. It's going to be worth it. It is tight access down in here, but we can get it with those two power valves out of the way. So, just got to loop this fella down in here. This will be the first time I've had it mounted back on here, too, since I've fully welded this W pipe. So, hopefully, nothing's shifted and tweaked out of place because... Sometimes, you know, you could have things all tacked together as, you know, good as you figure. But then as soon as you, you take it off and then you go fully weld it, all that heat going into it can cause the pipes to, you know, just pull and tweak a little bit. And then the bolt holes don't line up. So we may have to massage some holes in your mama here just to get everything lined up. Okay. So basically, I just have two bolts, each flange, kitty corner, bolting her on. So now she is tight and right. So now we can figure out, this is where I gotta go from the W pipe. I gotta come up, around, and over. So I've got the two bars in over top of the gas tank supporting the steering head here. I can leave this aluminum brace going down to this side, uh, frame stiffener, I guess it is. So I'm going to pull this bar out and this bar out so I've got all this room to work with and then I can figure out after the fact, you know, I could remake a bar to connect the front part of the chassis to the steering head here. Same thing with this one and I still got to put one in in place. I don't think I can go over top of the turbo. I might have to go down under it. So, you know, there's a lot of things to figure out here, but uh, we'll get her. We'll get her. So hopefully I can pull these bars out of here without anything really moving around. I guess we're going to find eight. Oh, okay, there's that one out. Nice one. What happens when we take this one out of here? Hmm. 
Well, would you look at that? Wow. Oh, look at all the room we have for activities up in here. Let's see. Oh, if this big old freaking duker of a bike starts in here. I mean, if that charge tube wasn't there. Geez, you know what? With a few tweaks and modifications, that, uh, that'll damn near go in there. Hmm. Hmm, well, I mean, it's in there, but, uh, it's definitely gonna need some modifications, so, yeah, I think we're gonna have to have a beer. <laughs> Let's assess the situation. You know, a lot of the world's problems could be solved by just taking a break, sitting down, having a beer, and thinking about things, but, uh, I guess that's kind of how a lot of the problems get started, too. But anywho, I do believe I think I know what I'm going to do. So this here pipe that Billy dropped off, the D&D &D pipe, kind of, it came out of a similar-ish setup, you know. Obviously not as new a chassis as this, but what I'm thinking is it's got this radius uh, joint here, and it's got that one there. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this one, which I'll be able to clock that down, might line up better with that but then i can curl this guy in a little bit maybe tuck this down because that pipe is a little bit too thick for the hood to fit in but if i can get it over this way and down a little bit then that should shoot across over here and then i should be able to shorten that down twist that because right now she's hooking down that way we need your mama hooking this way so uh yeah i think first things first i'll give that one a slice there if i have to I can slice it over here so I can pivot that down and around too. I think we can kind of corkscrew it down to the V-band there. Let's, uh, let's run her through the bandsaw. Let's modify this here pipe. Well, there's definitely no going back now. Just like so, and then that way, instead of this curving around like that, we can neck her down like that, and then we could trim it, pie cut it, so we can curl her down around. I might still have to cut it across here so I can clock that down around, but let's go, let's go take it over there and have a peekaboo. You know what? I might cut this off here now too while we're here, just because I wanna. <laughs> this will be getting in the way of the turb ski, so yeah, let's cut that off. Oh, hokey dokey, artichokey. Let's go see what it looks like. Well, I mean, it kind of fits in there, but uh, eh, I don't know. Let's, let's have a close look at this here. By cutting that at the weld there and being able to spin that around, reclock it, that's the right kind of bend I'm going to need to make this work, but I'll have to either shorten that up. And this pipe being such a big diameter that it is, it's kind of getting a little bit too close. I set the hood panel on there and it was kind of rubbing on the bottom of the headlight here. So that which means because I got to get that pipe a little bit over or I got to shrink it up here. But then the cone part of her, she's a bit, <laughs> this pipe's a little bit on the long side here, comes way past the turbo here. So, I mean, I'd have to shorten that up. Uh, I don't know, but my buddy, uh, my buddy farmer, uh, drop me off. That's a pipe off an 800 Articat, I believe. We got this 600 pipe over here. So they got some funny bends. This one's a little bit smaller diameter, so I might investigate that one. But I've already cut up that 800 one, so it kind of has the same shape as this. You know, I think they're basically for the same kind of snowmobile. So, but that's smaller diameter, so I'm going to mock that one up and have a peekaboo. Yeah, get this. Just kind of set this 800 pipe in there. Throw a couple of zip ties on her, just around the steering head here. Just to hold it in position a little bit. Yeah. 
You know the drill. We'll just let her dangle in there. We got to kind of get our spacing right so we can make sure we got clearance above the throttle bodies. We're not too close to the fuel tank. I'm thinking something like that. Might have to shorten that guy up a little bit and drop it down. But then it's a little bit shorter. I might still have to shorten this one up a little bit, but then we got to do like a, a freaking horseshoe reverse bend on there to get it back to the turb ski. Hmm. You know, this pipe's a little bit lower profile. Still a good size pipe. And I think I can just do a little uh, grab the V-band clamp there put a little bit of a pipe with a bend on it i'll cut that end off so it could hook into there weld it onto there then she can follow up over here obviously it's not going to be sitting exactly like that it'll probably be tweaked up a little bit i could shorten this up a little bit <laughs> then i need a fancy pipe to uh corkscrew up in there but that is i think gonna be the idea here so just looking at this pipe here, and it's got this cone, and I mean, the whole point of a two-stroke with the expansion pipe is the cone's down, so you get that, uh, the back and forth, uh, the scavenging effect from the two-strokes. So that's why they neck it down tight at the bottom here, but this is a two-inch opening, and even though the cone is coming down to the point there, if you look inside, it stays that two-inch pipe up until about here so i'm thinking theoretically i should be able to chop this down to about there and it's still neck down to two inch on the inside there which will give me more room to do my bend twisty pipe fancy pipe whatever you want to call it to there which will give me more access so i'm not getting into my side panel or anything like that and then i can push that pipe a little bit over that way so I can make it a smooth transition from the W pipe into there, around there, and into here. So I might need another beer. <laughs> and some crayons. After a wobble pop or two and uh, figuring the, the layout of this, I mean, if you squint, it's meant it's, <laughs> it's on there. You know, I got it. You know, uh, that's the pipe from Farmer, you know, shout out to uh, Travis Farmer there, you know, Southern Sled and Truck. Uh, without him, you know, that pipe there off the 800, I was going to use that D&D &D pipe that Billy dropped off with me. And uh, I would have liked to use it, but it was just a little bit too big for your mama. Your mama couldn't take that big pipe. So the <laughs> little pipe from Travis there fits in there. He's a great fella. He's got tons of parts. If you're interested or you need parts for sleds or whatnot, give him a call, you know. He's got some sleds in his inventory. He wants to get out, blow out prices. So uh, give him a shout. You know, couldn't really do this kind of stuff without the help of friends like Billy, you know, and Travis hook me up with some, you know, I get these ideas of I want to build this thing. And then you got to sit there. If I had to go out and pay for all these freaking parts, you know, try this, try that. You know, I'd go broke <laughs> before I even got it done. But Travis gave me that pipe there and the 601 to use his mock-up or whatever for this project and he you know he thinks it's going to be a pretty cool project so you know with his help we're getting somewhere we're getting somewhere let me take you on a tour of this thing got the v-band clamp down there it's two inch goes into the original pipe there i cut it at that first weld reclocked it and then she just does the s curve up goes in around the steering head she is a little bit tight to the tank but i mean i'll wrap this up with some header wrap i'll put some heat tape and may maybe put a bit of a heat shield in there hopefully uh, we don't melt this thing down but i got good clearance for my throttle body so i should have plenty of room under there and then i could hopefully come out that side with my charge tube and then uh, this guy here that neck down to the two inch there so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna fully weld all this and then i'll cone this out up on here so basically the way it worked is this tube goes all the way up inside so the exhaust gases were coming out here and then bouncing back and had to go out so i'm gonna recreate that when i finalize this pipe here and then i just got these uh 90 degree stainless bends coming out here wrapping around i got the original flex pipe from the uh, sidewinder on there. So, you know, it'll allow for a little bit of wiggle and then the band clamp on there. So I should be able to just undo that band clamp, undo that one there, and then snake this whole pipe out if I got to work on it. But realistically, even with the pipe 
on there, I can still get at all the spark plugs with the hood panel and the side panels off. I mean, it clearances everything in here. So I think we're gonna be golden. I'm obviously still gonna have to remake the bars going from the uh, steering head down to the chassis there to stiffen everything up. But, hey, that's mock-up exhaust, check. So now I just gotta build an intake. No, oh, I got no idea if this is gonna work out. You know, it's got quite a few <laughs> curly Q bends going in there, but I mean, theoretically it should, as long as the turbo does turbo things and the engine runs good. I think this is gonna be a pretty sweet custom pipe. She's not a D&D &D or a PSI, but she's a nice one, that's for sure. And I hammered out that custom little plate there. That's gonna be part of the pipe there. So when you pull the panels and everything off, she's gonna say, SRX embossed on there. Hey, hey, hey. She's definitely gonna be a nice one. <laughs> Ooh. This thing's coming together pretty slick, and I mean, it's gonna be awesome, you know. If this thing gets up and going, I don't know why Yamaha didn't do this, you know. If a redneck can do this in his shop with a few brewskis, uh, guaranteed Yamaha with all their R&D, definitely, they probably could have got triple pipes in there or whatnot, but <laughs> this thing's gonna be sweet. This is gonna be the only Yamaha SRX 700 triple sidewinder in there where they go in there, get spooled around in there, go through here, makes all the cool sounds. <laughs> so basically all I got to do is weld that exhaust up and then I can move on to the uh, <laughs> the intake which shouldn't really be too bad to do. You know I got the throttle bodies all sorted out and I got the exhaust sorted out. The engine's mounted in there solid. The clutching should be good. You know I'll have to figure out an oil system for the turbo too but I mean we're making progress. So I mean Hopefully, you know, if I can keep the momentum going, we'll be hopefully firing this thing up in a month or two here. You know, maybe get some grass drags out of this thing. Who knows? But I uh, might be a little <laughs> too optimistic on this. But you know what? If I think positive, I'm positive it's going to work. So, you know what? I hope you guys enjoy this build series. You know, something a little bit different. Hopefully, the SRX 700 Turbo Sidewinder is going to be a beast. But uh, I appreciate everybody tuning in, you know, uh, checking out the videos and supporting the channel. You know, going to our website www.rednextdirtyhands.com and then uh, checking out our merch. We've got some shirts, some hats, and some stickers up on there. You know, throw some stickers on your fridge. You might see if we can get some of those shop banners or flags for you guys. Let us know if you got any interest in those. Let me know if you'd be interested in hanging those in your shop. I know not everybody out there is a four-stroke turbo guy, so this is the this is for all the two-stroke lovers. This thing is gonna brap, 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 brap. But as always, thanks for tuning in, you know, and stay tuned. Hopefully, you know, I'll be back with another episode of getting the intake done on that. And then uh, don't forget, we need some ideas for <laughs> names for that drag sled over there. I know you'll come up with some good ones, but uh, <laughs> as always, take her easy. Cheers.